Oh my god! What is that? So the thing about this year's Oscar movies is that I haven't seen any of them. Bravely, I am taking on this video anyway and formulating my outfits through my famously rigorous research process of googling things. I am taking this as a challenge. I want those of you who have seen any of these movies to rate in the comments how accurately you think my outfit reflects these movies. I have my little um, judgy film critic costume on today, so it's only fair. I am inviting your judgment, so have at it. First up, we have Dune, and this is probably the movie I had heard the most about. I knew it was like a dystopian sci-fi space setting and that it had Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, although she doesn't seem to appear in the movie that much. I feel like we got scammed. Anyway, after Googling, I learned the plot seems to be a classic Chosen One narrative. Presumably Timmy is the Chosen One, I don't actually know, where he travels to a dangerous planet to fight that giant worm thing and save the world. Fun. We love it. In stills from the movie, the colors are generally entirely neutral. There's a lot of black, dark gray, and of course, sand color. The clothing itself is very modular and structured to give that futuristic space vibe, but there are also some flowy elements. It also appears very utilitarian. They're trying to survive out there. They got important things to do. With that, here's my outfit. I kept the colors to gray and black to match the costuming, except for this beige scarf because some of the characters had beige scarves. Also, it represents the landscape, you know, the dunes, if you will. Otherwise, we have these black cargo pants, the harness, and the Doc Martens for the utilitarian vibe, and this gray cutout top and the bolero hoodie to add the modular elements. Because there's so many layers here, I also wanted to give you a clearer look at just the base layers. The gray top is over a plain black turtleneck. It's the one I'm wearing right now. And by the way, I made that gray top myself two videos ago, so I will link it here and here if you are curious how. All right, how'd I do? I'm ready for my first score. Drop it in the comments. Keep track as you go. I want to hear your opinions. Next up, we have King Richard, which I knew was about Venus and Serena Williams' childhood getting into tennis. With more research, I learned that the timeline is the late 80s slash early 90s. They live in Compton. And from what I can tell, it's a pretty classic feel-good sports movie. But specifically, it focuses on their father's role as the coach and also, like, balancing fame and success with having a normal childhood. So it also seems like a family slash growing up story. The visual aesthetics of the marketing definitely lean into the era. It's all very retro sporty vibes. In the actual costuming, the girls are seen in white tennis skirts and polos, but they also wear just a lot of normal kid clothes. For this outfit, I of course wanted to lean into that sporty cute tennis style with this little sort of sporty looking skirt, a polo, the bubble braid, the white sneakers, and the crew socks. I also added a scrunchie for an 80s slash 90s touch, and I chose pink for the scrunchie in the shirt, despite it not being one of the main marketing colors, because A, this is my only polo and I thought it would fit the vibe, but also B, the movie is not not just about tennis, but also about youth and childhood, which pink is known to represent. There's even a scene in the movie where both girls are wearing bright pink. Again, pause, consider your rating. Okay, continue. Our next movie is Don't Look Up, which I knew was a Netflix movie satire about global warming that had a lot of celebrities in it, but the only one I could tell you is Ariana Grande. <laughs> After research, I learned that yes, the entire cast is A-listers, and the story specifically is commenting on government and media apathy towards climate change. The visual aesthetics of this movie look quite contemporary and pretty much like the current world we live in, but the dominant color is like a cool blue gray, which seems very fitting to symbolize apathy and conformity. The one visual element that really stands out against this is the styling of Jennifer Lawrence's character. She seems to be our, you know, rebel in the name of climate action in this movie, and she has striking red hair and wears some fun sweaters. For this outfit, I went a little more symbolic, so I chose these gray trousers and blue and gray blazer, which obviously works for that color symbolism, and the garments themselves sort of represent conformity and systems of power. I also added these boots and glasses just to add to, like, the professional traditionalist vibes, but then to signify the rebellion against that, I added those red-orange tones seen in Jennifer Lawrence's hair with the sweater, plus a matching claw clip because it brings out the orange more in the sweater and makes it more cohesive. These outfits aren't just symbolic, they're also stylish. Next up, we have Coda, which I hadn't even heard of before making this video. I learned that it is an English language remake of a 2014 French film, but this one is set in a small fishing town in Massachusetts. From what I can tell, it seems to be the story of a teen girl who gets into singing, and then she's torn between the family fishing business and singing. 
I guess just like a classic coming of age premise. The protagonist is also the only hearing member of her family. Her parents and brother are deaf and there seems to be mixed responses from the deaf community to this movie. It seems in some ways it's really positive representation, in other ways it's getting some things totally wrong. I'm not really qualified to speak on this but I just wanted to bring up the topic and I would love to hear from anyone who has more knowledge or experience in the comments. The visuals of this movie are very small town America. I have to say everyone from my hometown does dress like these characters so props for that. There's a lot of hoodies, flannels, baseball caps, etc. but it's also a fishing town so there's sort of like a nautical backdrop to it all. It doesn't come to the costuming which I'm sure is realistic but I did keep it in mind. For my outfit, I went with the hoodie, baseball cap, and flannel, all inspired by those items appearing in the movie, and the flannel is red because the protagonist also wears a lot of red, I assume just to like signify that she stands out, she's a little different. Then I chose Converse and the striped tee for the more classic teen coming of age vibes, plus the stripes are a very subtle nod to the nautical setting. On the bottom, I just went with jean shorts to keep with the casual small town America feel. All right, next up we have Belfast, which I assumed would be set in Ireland during the conflict that was happening there in the mid to late 20th century. After researching, I learned, firstly, this movie's all in black and white. I didn't know. I was on the right track with the setting. It takes place in Northern Ireland in 1969, and the story seems to be like a childhood slash coming of age drama, but set within the larger context of the Troubles happening in Ireland at the time. This particular conflict is obviously another thing I am not really qualified to explain. I'd suggest doing some of your own research if you're curious. The story does seem to be based on the creator's own childhood, so that was interesting. The visual aesthetics of this movie were a little harder to draw from because A, it's black and white, so that's a bit limiting, and B, a lot of the imagery really looks like it could be like documentary photography from the time. It doesn't come off super stylized to me. However, there was so thoughtful reasoning behind this outfit. Okay, let me tell you about it. Basically, this is my recreation of the main outfit the little boy protagonist wears. I think this works to represent the movie because it's modeled after children's clothing of the era and the movie is about this era through the lens of a child. I also kept with black and white, of course, to match the movie, both literally and symbolically, as black and white can also symbolize conflict, represent the stark, serious backdrop to the story, and be reminiscent of a real relic or memory of this era, since black and white photography was still dominant at the time. Wow, this color scheme? So brilliant of me to think of. Black and white, so symbolic. I am so smart for coming up with that for my outfit. Our next movie is another one I hadn't even heard of before working on this video. It is Drive My Car. After my research, I learned it's a Japanese movie based on a Haruki Murakami short story. It's, it's not in this book. It's in a different book, but look, I have one of his books. The internet describes it as a drama slash road film and I'm trying to do this whole video with the spoilers and I'm not sure which parts of this premise would be spoilers so I'm gonna be vague about this one but basically this man has to hire a driver and then they bond a lot over trauma <laughs> and shared secrets. Visually the movie is very understated. It seems to be almost entirely neutral except for the color red and it looks like it takes place in just the normal present day world. People also wear a lot of black in this movie and a lot of the scenes take place at nighttime. It definitely seems like it has a bit of an indie cool vibe. Like if this had been out in 2014, Tumblr would have been all over it. For this outfit, I went for an all black look, but of course my leather jacket with red lining was perfectly fitting. The all black is of course inspired by the protagonist's outfit, but also seems fitting with the nighttime and other dark motifs throughout the movie, both literal and metaphorical. Also, the driver is actually dressed quite similarly to the girl from Coda, strangely enough, so I didn't want to do that style again. I think this outfit also feels very understated indie cool, which fits with the visual aesthetics of the movie. I have no idea if that's the actual vibe, someone tell me in the comments please but that's how the movie looks to me next oh do you guys like my goat socks look at them aren't they cute okay next we have licorice pizza which i knew was a coming of age story that involved some sort of friendship between a teen boy and an adult woman also the adult woman is played by one of the heim sisters that was unexpected. After researching, I learned that this movie takes place in the valley in California in the 1970s. What really threw me about this movie, and I'm sorry this is the one spoiler in this video, but it's honestly more of like a content warning than a spoiler, is that they fall in love at the end? Maybe I'm missing something here. Again, please tell me in the comments if I'm totally misinterpreting what's happening in this movie. But like, 
from what it appears to me, extremely alarming, disturbing. I'm 24 right now, and that premise is horrifying to me. Okay, we do have to push forward, power through, I'm just making outfits. So, this movie obviously seems to have a very strong 70s aesthetic. Also very day-to-day, -day, slice of life vibes, everyone looks like normal people, and the styling is also quite youthful of course, it's a coming of age movie, so the styling is very casual and laid back. So for this look, first to keep it casual, I chose these sort of wide straight leg jeans, not quite flares, but they have a similar vibe. Then again, the converse of course, for quirky teen coming of age vibes. And finally, on top, nothing to me says 70 is like a funky button up, and this movie seems to agree. I just recently thrifted this one, which by the way, I have the most amazing thrift haul coming up soon, so subscribe if you don't want to miss it. All right, next up we have Power of the Dog, and my mom saw this movie and told me about it, so I already had a sense of the story. It is set on a 1920s Montana ranch. Also, this is the movie Sam Elliott called Gay, which <laughs> it's, it's just so funny. It's like, yeah, dude, cowboys are gay sometimes. Like, that's that's canonical. We can't run from history. Also, the main guy is Benedict Cumberbatch. I did not realize this. Maybe everyone else knew this already, but I did not recognize him at all. Anywho, the aesthetic, very much Western homesteader vibes. A lot of warm, faded, neutral colors. And Benedict Cumberbatch is wearing overalls in like every scene. Maybe there's some specific cowboy garment that's different from overalls somehow, but they look like overalls to me. So for my outfit, I started with overalls. Benedict is also always seen in dark colors, symbolizing his dark nature, it seems. I think he's like the villain of the story, while Kirsten Dunst and the other guy, who seem to be the innocent folks of this story, are usually in white. That other guy wears a white button-up, so I did that, and Kirsten Dunst wears a white sweater, so I did that too. Basically, we've got the costume symbolism of each main character, all in one outfit. Then I went with these white shoes to keep with the color scheme, and because honestly, they're the most western-inspired shoes I have, I know that's a stretch, okay. Just let me have this. Oh, and then I added this cow print bucket hat because of Sam Elliott's rant about the movie being inaccurate, even though he's literally just an actor and how would he know if it's accurate? But obviously this hat is inaccurate and I thought it would make him mad and I thought that was funny, so that's why I added it. I feel like my posture is just getting stranger and stranger throughout this video. Our next movie is Nightmare Alley, which is the last movie I had not heard of at all before researching for this video. Even though it's a Guillermo del Toro movie with Kate Blanchett, Rooney Mara, and Tony Collette on the poster, why didn't anyone tell me about this movie? I want to see it. So Nightmare Alley is a neo-noir thriller drama. From what I can tell, it's basically like 1940s New York carnival slash circus setting. This is a perfect setting for a thriller, in my onion. The visuals of this movie are gorgeous, as you might expect from Mr. Del Toro. It's totally vintage, mystical, carnival, circus. Every scene and costume seems totally rich and detailed, and the whole palette is very, like, dark, jewel tones, metallics, just very moody and a little mystical. I knew I had to start with the slinky gold top because it's so in line with the poster. Tony Collette is wearing like this exact thing. Uh, then I thought layering it over this dress would be a great way to bring in that deep red plus the flowy shape and the velvet keep with that mysterious vibe. To make the shirt like stay at the waist, I added this scarf tied around to hold it up, which is another perfect silky flowy sort of dark mystical element that fits with the color palette. I also went with tall black boots and then I added this fur coat, which I don't think anyone wears fur in the movie, but like it fits the vibe. It's luxurious, it's mysterious, it's glamorous, it's dark, it hides the awkward layering of the shirt over the dress, most importantly. I also added my celestial earrings to just really lean into the mystical, mysterious vibes. Finally, our last Best Picture nominee for 2022, West Side Story. For those who don't know, it's Romeo and Juliet, but in 50s New York, and instead of the Montagues and Capulets, it is the Jets and the Sharks, two rival gangs. The Sharks are also a Puerto Rican gang, which in the 1960s movie was cast as, you guessed it, white people in brown face. This time around, it is a Latin-led cast, but reception from the Puerto Rican community seems to be mixed at best. Again, I am not qualified to comment, but I would love to hear from those with experience or knowledge on the topic. Also just wanted to add the male lead of this movie has been accused of sexual assault by numerous women who were teenagers at the time. The movie was already wrapped and in the production phase by the time these accusations were made, but I just wanted to mention it because it feels important for people to know. Anyway, moving on to the visual aesthetics of this movie, 
They are beautiful. They are very 50s and very colorful. So a lot of, yeah, rich, bright colors, a lot of reds, yellows, blues. And Maria also wears this white dress, which, you know, seems probably symbolic and purposeful. So it's a significant costuming. So for my outfit, I chose this white puff sleeve top that looks pretty much just like the top of Maria's dress. Then on the bottom, I used this dress with the top folded down, which I felt very brilliant for, uh, for that nice full flared, brightly colored skirt element. None of the costuming in this movie is layered at all, but I really wanted to bring in more color, so I did that with this little stripey scarf tied around my hair. And I styled my hair half up like Maria's channeling the 50s, you know, just a sweet feminine look. All right, y'all, it's time for you to leave your ratings of my outfits, my interpretation of these movies. What do we think? Was it accurate? Was it way off? That would be funnier, honestly. And if you haven't seen any of these movies either, I want to hear from you because A, that will make me feel less embarrassed about not having seen any of them, and B, I still value your opinion. I feel like if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably also enjoy my other videos of outfits inspired by popular media like TV shows, movies, albums. I have a whole playlist of them that I will link right here and in the description. If you want to see more like this, subscribe because I make more stuff like this. Plus, I heard if you like, comment, and subscribe, your Oscar picks have a higher chance of winning. Not, not saying I have any sway in that, but that's just what I heard could happen.